Thank you. Three three zero one three three zero one three three zero one three 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 zero one. This message will repeat. It was a vast thing, beyond knowing, a sea of information coded in spiral and pheromone, infinite intricacy that only the body, in its strong blind way, could ever read. Neuromancer, William Gibson. Three three zero one three three zero one three three zero one. Hello and welcome to It Doesn't Add Up, a conspiracy theory podcast. I guess that's what we call it, right? Yeah, um, it's a conspiracy theory podcast, loosely, tightly. Yeah. Is that is that the opposite? The kind that does loosely saying something tightly something. I guess you could, but it sounds bizarre. It's a it's um, it's a, some way to say something. But yeah, uh, we're the kind of conspiracy theory podcast that doesn't get banned from Twitter yet. Probably because so. I'd say our podcast is more making fun of everything than uh, anything else. We're basically a yes, podcast. And, and we're also not harassing dead children, which is a plus, I'd say. Yeah, and I'm not going to add a yet on to uh, that one. But, you know, you never know, I guess. No, no. Yeah, I, I think something will go very wrong if that's the direction it takes but um, i don't think twitter's gonna come after our like eight followers anyway no no thanks yeah shout out to you i'll I'll get to that shout out to all eight of you yeah i for some for some reason i had thought that uh the last time we did an episode was like a year ago no it was just april we we got our things together just just, right before graduation and everything yeah it, it just it it felt a lot longer it's it was a very long summer let me tell you um, but yes. if, you, if you're new to us, we are a podcast that makes fun of Reddit as uh, as you do. Yeah. Kind of sees why, you know, it might add up or why it doesn't add up. And that's uh, that's us. <laughs> Hello <laughs> and welcome. Hello. That's, that's the title. That's the premise. And that's the whole, you know, what you see is what you get kind of thing. In the case that you decided to not check out any other episodes besides this one, now you know. We should maybe talk about last time. So last time we talked about the uh, sort of a pop culture uh, figure. Well, several, really. Um, we talked about celebrity body replacements and doppelgangers and things like that. Mostly centered around uh, the theory that Avril Lavigne died years ago and was replaced. Yeah, that was pretty much the whole damn thing. Uh, isn't that funny? Because I think her last album was called The Best Damn Thing. Well, you know, this is just the next best thing. So, yeah. Um, but if you what want you more onto that, we're not going to tell you now. You can go listen to that episode, which you can find conveniently at our website. Yes. And everywhere. Everywhere. But Anywhere you listen to a podcast. This is our longest intro, I think. I think... And I'm going to edit the hell out of it. <laughs> I can already feel yeah. it. I'm just going to I'm going to cut this thing to shreds perhaps we should have um just turned this on and started talking to get some of that out because we haven't filmed an intro in so long that too and also like i haven't really talked to you yeah like <laughs> it's been it's been about a week really? it's been about a week <laughs> yeah but like the last time we talked was just like about overwatch so it wasn't real conversation it was just like gosh this is fucking hanzo like yeah. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't real so heavy editing is going to happen. Today we have a more of, I guess, a mystery. A conspiracy, that is, if you will. That is still maybe unfolding and that really doesn't necessarily have any answers, I would say. Mm-hmm. At least not satisfying ones, probably. Sorry to burst bubbles, but I, I, yeah, I wouldn't say there's definitive resolution here. Um, which I think kind of makes it more exciting because we didn't miss the boat, I guess, completely. Today, we have um, a series of puzzles, almost. Kind of like the Da Vinci Code, but this is almost like the Da Vinci Code, but Reddit. So it's like... And just slightly less Tom Hanks. Only slightly. Slightly. Only slightly. What we have for you today, it's all about Reddit, 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 Reddit. January 25th of 2012 which i don't know if you remember that year that was the year the mayans said was the world was supposed to end and sadly they were wrong we're still here what six years later yeah wow Ooh, wow i think so Ooh, i just got a burst of yeah. wow i'm old so yeah january 5th who, who do you think you're talking to someone older than me clearly january 5th 2012 an image was posted to 4chan i'm so sorry reddit people i called it 
4 it's 4chan, not Reddit. However, we'll get well, into Reddit. Well, usually usually the way this stuff goes is that something happens on 4chan and then like finds its way. A couple hours later, it's just on Reddit. To me, so. they're the same thing, which I bet I just probably offended like so many people. But hey, don't they love offending people? It's all pipes. Isn't that their fu- that their thing? They love being offensive and offending people. Snowflakes, all that. Oops, that, sorry, we're not supposed to get political. Yeah. I'll avoid. Yeah. I'll refrain. Um, anyway, so this image shows up on 4chan, and this image basically is a picture that just has text, and it just says, you know what? I, um, I don't... We didn't, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't <laughs> grab the link. We didn't embed the picture. The image. <laughs> we have a placeholder <laughs> where the image is supposed to go. Please hold. January 5th, 2012. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear that phone? Can you hear that phone? Yes. <laughs> it's, yes. It sounds like it's cicada. <laughs> it, it sound. It sounds like the intro to one of the Coheed albums. January. But I think in the, in that album, it's actually like a dog on the other line. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Hello. We are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. And there is a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We will look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. 3301. And that was it. That was the image. Uh, I don't know why mm-hmm. that was how uh, Cicada sounds, but that's now the Cicada voice, if I can ever replicate that again. Um, which I will need to, because there's there's a lot here. There's there's going to be some more. There's a lot here. <laughs> Basically, um, to save you some of the time of having to solve this puzzle yourself, because God knows that's not what we're here for. The uh, image, what was hidden in here, you could be found if you Im- opened the image in like a notepad, like just the generic text app. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, and the very bottom, um, it said Clavdiv Caesar says, and then um, a random string of well, code. I, be- I believe, like in Latin, the V's are U's. So Clav Dubs. So it's Claudius Caesar, oh. buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took Latin. Did you? Yeah, that's real sad. Um, and you didn't know about the, the <laughs> UV thing? No, Club Dubs didn't know. That's my new name, Club Oops. Dubs. It had a random string of code, um, which maybe it feels like that could be something that Julius Caesar said. Or perhaps Claudius. Yeah, Claudius, not Julius. I think, yeah, I think much more likely it'd be... Caesar. Claudius. But if you know anything about um, cryptology, you knew what a Caesar cipher was, which is one of the simplest and most widely known encryption techniques, which I feel like should tell you something. Simplest and most widely known. Seems like it's entry level cryptology to me. But hey, that's me inserting my opinion before I even tell you what there's to have an opinion on. So let's... Sounds a lot like some entry level hipster bullshit, sis. Listen... The wound is raw. (laughs) But basically, if you don't know what a Caesar cipher is, which I also didn't until I Wikipedia it, it's um, basically it shifts all the letters of the known alphabet. So like the 26 letters, it shifts them over by four. Well, just in this specific instance, because of the reference to Rome's fourth emperor, normally the Caesar cipher is just something that shifts the letter to the alphabet over by a set number. And so you just need something else to indicate what that number is. And uh, in this case, it'd be the fourth emperor. Okay. Um, So then, um, which basically running it through that um, produced another image link, which took you to Imager. And it was a picture of a duck. And we didn't put the other image in after we made that same mistake. Right. It was an image of a duck. And it read, whoops, just decoys this way. Looks like you can't guess how to get the message out. I changed that voice halfway through the sentence. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just glad you didn't do like a Donald Duck. Kinda. I can't do a Donald Duck. I thought about it for a second, um, but we're going to save that. But it was a picture of a duck. But um, everyone just 
every, the people who solved this puzzle looked at it and were like, oh, it says outguess. So we're going to run this image through a program called outguess, which is um, a program you can run images through for the purchases, pur- purposes of sonography. And um, steganography. Steganography. Stegosaurus. Dinosaurs. The yeah. Dinosaurs are involved in this. Yeah, so that's just the process of hiding something within an image or something else like that. So it's what basically this scavenger is. hunt type thing, which is basically what we're going through. I feel yep. like, yeah, like if you have no context to this, you're a little lost probably. I'm probably not doing a good job. You ran it through Outguess, the program, and it took you to a link to a paste bin, which took you to a page full of book codes and a link to a Reddit. Like I said, it always comes back to Reddit. We need a T-shirt. It always comes back to Reddit. Oh, um, there you go. But the Reddit form was created by a user called Cage Throttle Us. And I just want to say nothing ever comes out of that username. No one ever mentions it again. No one like says they looked into whose IP address that was or anything. Just Cage Throttle Us. Who's us? I don't know. I think it'd be pretty difficult because Reddit is basically anonymous. That's the danger. Like you don't even you don't even like need to verify an email address. I don't think. That's why people make throwaway Reddit accounts. Well, no one ever yep. looked into that and told me what Cage Throttle Us meant, so I can't tell you. The Reddit thread was full of 188 random threads of letters, or seemingly random letters and numbers. Um, and then two threads with pictures. It said, welcome. And then it said, problems. The header for the entire Reddit forum was a, um image of my numerals. And if you took the number and I, ha- I hate to I hate to, I don't want to like pick on you or anything. But whenever you made this section of the notes, you um, said that the header consisted of Mayan Roman numerals, <laughs> which I thought was just so good. But I had to edit it. So I did. <laughs> any, <laughs> Sorry, I, any, I did not want to interrupt, but I had to. any number that isn't a regular number is a Roman numeral. <laughs> That's how I see it in this world. <laughs> You can see I, for one, would not be able to solve these puzzles, but I don't think anyone would, which is uh, going on some national treasure scavenger hunt bullshit. All roads lead to Roman numerals. And Reddit. If you take the title of the subreddit, which is written in Mayan numerals, I almost said it mm. again. <laughs> um, if you take it, run it through the cipher that you had done before with the, um, the uh, line from the first image, it prompted... It said verify 7A35090F, which means absolutely nothing to you. But if you run that, if you run the two images through Outguess, it gave you text that reads, From here on out, we will cryptographically sign all messages with this key. And there was the key. And then the other image had a line. The key has always been right in front of your eyes. This isn't the quest for the Holy Grail. Stop making it more difficult than it is. Now see, that last sentence should be just catchphrase of the podcast. <laughs> Conspiracy. Stop making this more difficult than it is. And it, the whole trick is, is that a line to us or is that about the theories? And that's the joke. It's both, huh? Yeah, yeah. Funny. Talk about a t-shirt. Yeah. That, the key that was given was um, a verification PGP key ID, which is a security measure that basically confirms the identity of the source. If you know anything about cryptography, I probably sound like a giant idiot or anything about computer science. Cicada, which I don't think we've actually dropped that word yet. Cicada. That's, that's probably a mistake. Yeah. Dropping that up. The, the, the group supposedly, or the individuals or whatever behind this scavenger hunt which we were going to get into because we kind of wanted to guide you through this like a way like you were almost like what is this where are we going like the people who solved this puzzle were because they had no yeah. idea it was a way to identify confirm that it was them because by this point the puzzle had come out in almost like steps and there have been a lot of fake quote-unquote fake images and things that, like people like trying to act like that was part of the puzzle and so anyway they confirmed their identity with a pgp key he also allowed for the, everything in the entire Reddit thread to be translated from random letters and strings and numbers into actual text, which read as King Arthur, if you're familiar with literature of any kind. I'm sure you've heard of King Arthur. Yes, um, I'm not sure what exactly there's because there's many different texts and versions of King Arthur. It, it doesn't really matter so much which one it was. It was just the fact that it was King Arthur. 
It was an Arthur text, yeah. When you went back to um, the book code that we previously mentioned and applied it to the King Arthur text, you got a phone number. So this is the first the first instance of it bleeding in from being online to now suddenly there's almost something tangible here. There's a there's a phone number. Which it's just like bleeding into the real quote unquote real world suddenly bringing it into more of than just a website um, website uh, on the web internet scavenger hunt um, calling the number yeah. which we would give you the number if you wanted to call it for fun but in, it is disconnected as it has been six did years did you attempt I did actually I did I tried mm. to check out a couple of the websites linked here and um, the Reddit thread I think is still up but a couple of things are down um, the phone number's down but had you been able to reach it it would read. Oh, no, actually wouldn't read it would say and a robotic text of voice the key here but i'm not going to do a robot voice i'm going to keep going very mm. good <laughs> you have done well there are three prime numbers associated with the original dot the original final dot jpeg image 3301 is one of them you will have to find the other two multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com on the end to find the next step good luck Goodbye. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you. Mathematics. And actually, the, uh, the other two prime numbers, pretty basic, the actual dimensions of the image, which were, they were 503 by 509. There you go. What you get is 845145127.com, which again, yeah, it's not, it's not up anymore. You could try. Um, you can buy the domain. Actually, it's for sale in case you were wondering. Now, this is an ad read for whoever owns that domain. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I was going to say, like, damn, that's because if you if you just decided to buy that domain and just plastered it with ads, it was just one of those ones where it's like, hey, you could buy this domain and it was like related things, but it wasn't. It, yeah, no, well, no one was actually exploiting it, but it was for sale back when it was still active. The website had an image of a cicada, which is now where cicadas revealed and a countdown. Ah. The countdown, um, depending on when you reached it, just counted down to Monday, January 9th at seventeen hundred, which I can't tell you what time that is. Because I'm dumb and I don't know military time. I think, what is that, five o'clock? Unsure. <laughs> Unconfirmed. Again, don't know military time. Yes. Yes. But when you came back to the site after January 9th at five o'clock, 2012, it was just a list of coordinates and a message that read, find our symbol at the location nearest you. And um, they were all over the place, literally like all across the world, Warsaw, Poland, Korea, Arkansas, which what happens in Arkansas, Seattle, and then France, all over, all over the place, all over the globe. Yeah. Basically, what it was was a flyer with a QR code. It just said the cicada symbol, and it read everywhere three three zero one, which we now know that three three zero one stands for cicada, the group, the person. Unconfirmed. We don't know. We'll get into it. If you scan the QR code, despite there being like a million clues across the United States, there were only two images, two different images that the different QR codes would pull up. So they only needed two separate ones. I didn't actually find what the two different images that were. Um, yeah, I believe it, it, it was just the basic cicada symbol that they sort of attached to everything else following this. It's, but, but the specific files of those image files were the same. Uh, Yes, but that those are the ones that had the yeah the hidden message. So yeah, so two there were only two hidden messages, which I will now read to you. In twenty nine volumes, knowledge was once contained. How many lines of the code remained when the map and I was waiting for that. <laughs> Go for it. Ma ma bino minute. Ooh. Ma bin bam. Ma it's like it's like that that it's like that um the vine. <laughs> Where the lady's trying to do a Jamaican accent, and then she just kind of yelps. <laughs> or the um, pronouncing things wrong on purpose, Papa Yeah. yeah. Um, See, those ones I don't like. I don't. I don't get that. I don't either, but I know them by heart. Oof. Papa Yeah. Um, but I would pronounce that uh, Mabinogion. Mabinogion. I I think in my head I could do that, but my mouth was like, no, no. Mano, mano. It's na 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 When the Mabinogian paused. There you go. Go that far in the beginning and find my first name. And the other one read, A poem for a king meant to be read only once and vanish. Alas, it could not remain unseen. And if you were wondering what any of that meant, mm -hmm. just in case you weren't just enjoying my lovely accent, Mabino Gino. 
Whoa. <laughs> so I read that. The Mabinogian is the earliest known prose of Britain, originally written in Middle Welsh. Sometimes it's really easy to figure out which one of us wrote which specific notes for the episode. I think that's what I'm called for. I don't think I need to be called no. out like this. No, I'm just, no, I'm I'm calling myself out because if it's something to do with ancient prose <laughs> written in Middle Welsh, it's something I probably researched and stuck in there. So yeah, I did not know what the my, my bino yeah. bino was. I'm gonna keep calling it that because it's catchy. <laughs> Well, good thing that this is where it makes its swift exit from the tail. So yeah, this thing is like almost like one of our dumb references. Like it makes an appearance and then it's gone. Basically, I will say yeah. that like that you've got all these old references. They they don't add up to much. Along with that, there was also a string of more book code and instructions to do more in math with the first prime numbers listed and from the string of book code and the text. This is a lot of math. I'm telling you, I could not have solved it. Most people couldn't, which again is part of this. Which is, I guess, their point. Yeah. They, they wanted yeah. the best. When you did that, you got a poem from Agrippa, The Book of the Dead, by cyberpunk writer William Gibson, if you're familiar. Perhaps if you're into our stuff, you may be. Well, yeah, I'm actually more familiar than I would normally be because I'm currently reading... This is just a weird coincidence. I'm currently reading Gibson's cyberpunk novel, Neuromancer. How is it? Give us a review. Uh, it's really good so far. I have like 100 pages left. You might be interested in the fact one of your old favorite bands, uh, Stray Light Run... Oh, that's a weird they, reference. Yeah, they got the name from uh, Neuromancer. William Gibson uh, is, he's the one that actually coined the term cyberspace. Mm. And he sort of explored his idea of what cyberspace was beginning in Neuromancer. But yeah, so he's a cool dude. Um, And if you're so unfamiliar with how cool he is, Agrippa, the Book of the Dead, originally the poem that had been included, had been stored on a floppy disk that was programmed to encrypt itself after the first use so that you would never be able to see that again. Which again, see, look at that cryptology, which I think is basically where the reference ends. It's that, look, this guy used cryptology. We too do cryptology. Kind of. I think it's more, maybe I'm giving them too much credit, but I think it's a lot more metaphorical. Perhaps. Just the, just the idea of information being not only hidden, but vanishing or being destroyed or no longer existing. Look at the Because that was kind of Gibson's... Yeah, that was kind of Gibson's whole point with like this project of making the poem and then just having it stored in different kinds of mediums that would intentionally destroy themselves. Like the book so. that was um, treated with photosensitive chemicals so that it would fade the text the more you would read the book. Just, just, just not even that more that it was being read, just more that it was existing. It was just cannibalizing itself. It was just constantly deteriorating. You found a copy of his writing online, so that's the whole, like, was meant to be seen once, and alas, that's not the case. It's actually it's actually super fascinating to, like, look up how the text has survived. Like, it took people actually a really long time to... Because at first, whenever they were talking about the project, they said that... They didn't say that it was just being encrypted in the floppy disk. They said that it was, like, a virus that was just going to destroy itself or eat itself or whatever. Which sounds um, a lot cooler. But that wasn't the case. It, it does, yeah, but... It was actually just being encrypted, and so it just took a long time for it to be cracked. And there was also, like, cryptography associated with cracking that encryption. Because they performed the poem at this big event, too, where, like, they unveiled, you know, the poem, basically. And I think this is, like, in 94, I think. It might have been, like, early 90s. Somehow people snuck in bootleg recordings of it and then transposed it and then put it online on, like, weird early, early, early not even AOL, like Usenet forums and stuff like that. So it just kind of has survived from that mostly, like and not even so much the decryption of the floppy disk, but just bootleg recordings of the event. I just, I just think that's the most fascinating thing in the world, but I'm a weird lit dork. So now that we've had that tangent, <laughs> yes, because I'll tell you, Cicada didn't go that deep with it either. I mean, maybe in theory, that's the metaphor, but you know, if you... Took along the book code that was given the second time and took it to the Agrippa book, poem, all of that. You get a URL that can only be opened through Tor, which if you know anything about Tor, you know a lot about me. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, uh, it's how you get to the black web, the dark web, the underbelly of the internet. Yeah, it's it's the common like protocol for accessing, accessing the dark web or the deep it's web. Like it's like Google Chrome for the dark web browser. That's the word. 
and and usually like the, whenever like the phrase dark web you hear a lot about like oh there's shady drug deals and gross ass pedophiles and things like that but most of the dark web or the deep web is just comprised of like either private networks and like all the files associated with them and things like that and just like things that web crawlers which is what google and other search engines do to like find new web pages on the web just the stuff that those can't access so it's not like basically publicly available um, which is but it's not all like nefarious illegal i mean there's a lot of it but there's that's not exclusively what it is take a tour the url takes you to a page that reads please create a new email address with a public free-based web service google not free-based that's whenever you're doing a little bit of coke hey we don't know <laughs> what cicada is about free <laughs> web-based service one you've never used before and enter it below we recommend you do this while still using Tor for anonymity. We will email you a number within the next few days and the order in which you arrived at this page. Once you've received it, come back to this page and append a slash and the number you received to this URL. Followed by an example of exactly how to do that, which I just want to say, at this point in the puzzle, if you don't know... How to, like, how to like type in a URL. How to extend a URL. What are you doing? You can like un unencrypt. Is that the un decrypt? Decrypt would probably be the yeah. Decrypt. Yeah, yeah. Like you're you're this web page is located on the dark web. You had to figure out how to install Tor and like all these other things, and you can't Think figure out so. how to yeah type in eight eight more characters. Or the fact that like they the just URL. wouldn't let them figure it out themselves. Like oh, what do I do with this number? Like. Right. I feel like I could have yeah. come to that conclusion eventually, but they, they really spelled it out by literally giving an example. Once they got the email, the people who solved this, which we don't know who that is. Like, I, that, I feel weird, like, like talking about these people that, like, maybe don't exist. Yeah, frequently um, people that have solved or claim to have solved the puzzles are referred to as the winners, quote unquote. That reminds me of that one short story, The Lottery. I don't know why, but. um. Sure. Shirley Jackson. Yeah. The email um, included an RSA message and a guide on how to decrypt it, which, again, I feel like it's weird that they're start suddenly, like, handing these people these things. Because I want you to keep in mind, the time frame that this puzzle takes place across is literally a period of days. So, like, yeah. it wasn't like they were, like... The internet moves fast. Yeah, it wasn't like they were, like, waiting for people to solve, like, oh, well, maybe I should give them a hand now, like, no one's solving this. It's weird that they're handing them these guides and things. But if the first email was cracked, um, users got sent another email with an audio file. We should edit in the audio file. I think that would be neat to do. Yes, I was planning on it. To but, let people uh, hear thank that. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Well, now here, in the, here, editing Billy, uh, please throw that in. This song is your own path. Another step on the road to enlightenment. Follow it and share not. Let the chorus be your guide to the depths. Let the priests of the Raven of Dawn no longer deadly in black. With hoarse note curse the sons of joy. Nor his accepted brethren, womb tyrant, he calls lay free. Free lay the bound or build the roof, nor pale religious lechery call that virginity that wishes but acts not. For everything that lives is holy. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed that little interlude there. It's good shit. That was that was something. I'll tell you that. I'll try not to laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you went where I went, but I thought too is to look at this song visually, which there's like a million different programs you can do that to through. Um, like look at the sound waves and all that, and like the notes. The waveform, yeah. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Two songs intertwined. So you got two keys that you can create through another Caesar cipher, and basically it translates to very good. You have proven to be most dedicated to come this far to attain enlightenment. Create a PGP key for your email address and upload it to the MIT key server. MIT key? I believe. MIT key. MIT, I knew yeah. that too, but as soon as I went to read it, I was like, MIT key. MIT key. You know, I love her music. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a good joke. The MIT key server. 
Then encrypt the following word list using this cicada 3301 public key. Sign it with your key. Send the AC. <laughs> Ace S C I I. Usually people just say ASCII. ASCII? The ass key. Okay, all right, all right, <laughs> mid key. You need to send the ass key, armored cipher to the Gmail address from which you received your numbers. Your words are, and then each different person, each winner, got their own different words to send with their ass key. That was it. That was that's puzzle one, which I just I that 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 we know of. That's that's all that's where public, the... quote unquote. Um, I just, I yeah. just there's something that I need to call out though. Those last two messages talk about the path to enlightenment, which is where this mm-hmm. starts to get weird. Because the whole thing is that these people have been going on this like scavenger hunt, for lack of a better word. Or, no, no, actually, that's exactly what it is. It's a scavenger. No, hunt. yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's an a scavenger encryption hunt. scavenger hunt. It seems like fun. Like if I knew how to do that shit, I would probably. I probably wouldn't have been all over it because I have no motivation to do anything. But like, I would have been like, "Wow, looks like fun." Wish I could do that. Mm-hmm. Well, which is why like so much of these like ARG things are so popular now. You know, like yeah. and just like just viral marketing mm-hmm. and things that use like similar methods, like not as complex and needing expert level skills to unlock just a similar idea of like you feel like you're unraveling a mystery that like only maybe only you can solve yeah it's um and it feeds into that whole fear of missing out thing and wanting to be a part of something the exclusivity because i want to say um because following this cicada on their the original reddit posted the thing it basically said phone number kept getting called and the website kept being visited they posted um an image one that wasn't hidden just like it, it matched the text of the first one just like a black text with white no Black background, white text that just read, Hello, we have now found the individuals we sought. Thus, our month-long journey ends for now. Thank you for your dedication and effort. If you did not complete the test or received an email, do not despair. There will be more opportunities like this one. Thank you all. And then there was a postscript containing another string of numbers, which at the time wasn't relevant but you know everything's relevant but yeah so they shut it down that's all that was known to the public no explanation as to what this was about what this is for what the winners got if anything what what they were recruited into what they were recruited yeah, for the, what if they the, yeah. if there were actually winners like completely or um and was, there's ev- there's there's potential evidence and leaks that there might have been more puzzles and more tasks uh that were private and nobody just ever talked about it or posted anything online about it because we don't know the motivation if, if that or reasoning was even the case. behind it. Yeah. No so idea. that was it. And so that's basically what's considered the 2012 puzzle. So we thought it was kind of important and interesting to go through that first puzzle. In- and for the subsequent puzzles, uh, we're not going to go step by step. Because basically, especially for 2013's puzzle, it was basically more of the same. I just think it was a lot more complex, it seemed. Yeah. The way they brought it about is a little interesting. They posted it a year and a day so January 6th, 2013, since the first puzzle was released. Yeah, it was more of the same, like Billy said. But again, they didn't say what they were recruiting for or anything, just that they were searching for more recruits for yeah. God knows and what. One of the important, I guess, more important things to remember from 2013, the second puzzle, that one of the early clues dealt with the text, The Law by Aleister Crowley. We might see some more things like that. Oh, but I did want to I did want to talk about this because this was where there was a few more leaks and more evidence of there being another private stage after sort of the public stage was over. Like if these winners advanced on and basically they were asked weird questions that seemed like a personality test. So, yeah, they were given um, a type of question and they had to give a statement and Some of the answers that they were allowed to choose from were true, false, indeterminate, meaningless, self-referential, game rule, strange loop, or none of the above. I think I would answer them all with strange loop. Okay, so like one one of the questions is two people are standing by a lake. One says, that's a lovely reflection in the water. The other says, I see no reflection, but it's a fascinating assortment of fish, plants, and rocks within the water. Which one is lying? Which is weird... My answer is like strange loop. Like that. <laughs> it might be a strange loop. I don't know. Have you seen that meme that's like, um, brother, where are the loops? Or give me the loops. 
with like a no. cat. It makes me think of that. Brother the Loops. Mm. That was 2013. Not as exciting as 2012, though. I mean, exciting if you wanted to be a part of whatever this was and try to get in on it. So and then it was solved and they closed it. And that was that. Once again, they just disappeared for another year. 2014 came along and uh, there was the puzzle. And this is where it gets like pretty damn weird. Like, all things considered. Like, I, we've been on a bit of a journey so far already, but this is, like, where they just... And we'll see later on, potentially, why this puzzle was so different. Basically, 2014's puzzle resulted in a book called the uh, Liber Primus, which could be translated to first book or prime book or book of primes. Not to be and confused so seen... with Amazon. Right, yes. M maybe that, yeah, because there's no prime books no, maybe so this is that's, maybe, that's who's maybe actually Cicada behind this. Got the... Jeff Bezos is oh. Sir Cicada. Cicada number one. He yeah. is three three oh one. That's how many billions he has. <laughs> so yeah. And this book is basically it's like fifty eight pages, I believe, of it's completely coded. As of like today, at twenty eighteen, only seventeen pages out of like the fifty eight have been solved. That's pretty much where the puzzle journey ends. In 2016, Cicada came out, which um, again, we know that this is actually Cicada or whoever the person behind these puzzles has been is because of that one PCP key that confirms it's the same. PGP, you keep making these drug references and I'm getting a little <laughs> concerned. PCP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of MySpace. PC for PC. Oh my God. Fix your comments. That's really what Cicada was all about. They just wanted to bring MySpace back. Kind of, yeah. Basically, but they just 20... want to exchange some pics, man. So in 2016, um, it's funny. I was mentioning like the guidance, like come and they come out and say guide because it's not like no one had taken that long to solve it. Um, in 2016, they were like, yeah, hey, um, 2014's puzzle hasn't been solved, so uh, yeah. yeah, almost like, like a PR like... statement. Like we're not releasing more puzzles because you haven't finished our last one. <laughs> right yeah because they were silent through all throughout 2015 2016 and so there's like yeah like go back it's not done like what i thought it might be interesting to go through some of the uh the translated pages of the liber primus and you could find this pretty easily if you go to this uncovering cicada wiki because a lot of this is more visual because a lot of it is like weird celtic runes and things like that that needed to be translated My so in it's kind of <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting just to see, like, the weird layout and th the things like this. Maybe you know more than we do. Well, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it sort of begins with, like, well, first of all, the cover is, like, this weird mishmash of, like, some of Newton's artworks and some of William Blake's. It's it's kind of weird to look at, just, like, this weird collage. So it begins, a warning. Believe nothing from this book except what you know to be true. Test the knowledge. Find your truth. Experience your death. Do not edit or change this book or the message contained within either the words or their numbers for all is sacred. Then it goes to uh, chapter one, uh, Intus or Intus, I'm not sure. Welcome. Welcome, pilgrim, to the great journey toward the end of all things. It is not an easy trip, but for those who find their way here, it is a necessary one. Along the way, you will find an end to all struggle and suffering, your innocence, your illusions, your certainty, and your reality. Ultimately, you will discover an end to self. See, we're getting real deep here. Yeah, this is Going where it back gets... to the path of enlightenment things, which is like the only sort of glimpse into this kind of shit we had from like puzzle one. So it continues here. It is through this pilgrimage that we shape ourselves and our realities. Journey deep within and you will arrive outside. Like the instar, it is only through going within that we may emerge. Wisdom. You are a being unto yourself. You are a law unto yourself. Each intelligence is holy for all that lives is holy. And instruction command your own self. So they mentioned Instar, and this was something that was mentioned within, I believe, 2013's Puzzle 2, uh, whichever one had, there was more uh, music and song references. It was a weird song that they released, uh, dropped a fire mixtape. <laughs> um, but an Instar is uh, supposedly one of the stages of like an insect molting. So it just is like basically another kind of cicada image. Uh, it's just a stage of insect, a growing cicada, something like that. Some wisdom. The primes are sacred. The totient function is sacred. All things should be encrypted. Know this. And then I think there's just a 
string of numbers that actually hasn't been solved from this page yet. Then uh, this this one's really interesting. This goes on for multiple pages. A koan, which is a sort of like a Japanese or a Chinese um, like proverb or like fable that's supposed to kind of, yeah no, not really <laughs> or like a fable that's like supposed to import or almost even like a thought puzzle or a thought experiment or something like that along those lines um so this one goes a man decided to go and study with a master he went to the door of the master who are you who wishes to study here asked the master the student told the master his name that is not who you are that is only what you are called who are you who wishes to study here he asked again the man thought for a moment and replied i am a professor that is what you do not who you are, replied the master. Who are you who wishes to study here? Confused, the man thought some, thought some more. Finally, he answered, I am a human being. That is only your species, not who you are. Who are you who wishes to study here, asked the master again. After a moment of thought, the professor replied, I am a consciousness inhabiting an arbitrary body. That is merely what you are, not who you are. Who are you who wishes to study here? The man was getting irritated. I am, he started, but he could not think of anything else to say, so he trailed off. After a long pause, the master replied, Then you are welcome to come study. An instruction, do four unreasonable things each day. I mean, I feel like I do that as it is, so maybe I'm on my own path to enlightenment. So just like some weird existential Descartes kind of... <laughs> nonsense the loss of divinity the circumference practices three behaviors which cause the loss of divinity consumption we consume too much because we believe the following two errors within the deception one we do not have enough or there is not enough two we have what we have now by luck and we will not be strong enough later to obtain what we need most things are not worth consuming preservation we preserve things because we believe we are weak if we lose them we will not be strong enough to gain them again this is the deception. Most things are not worth preserving. Adherence. We follow dogma so that we can belong and be right. Or we follow reason so we can be we can belong and be right. There's nothing to be right about. To belong is death. It is the behaviors of consumption, preservation, and adherence that have us lose our primality and thus our divinity. Some wisdom. Amass great wealth. Never become attached to what you own. Be prepared to destroy all that you own. And instruction. Program your mind, program reality. So then there's another koan here. During a lesson, the master explained the I. The I is the voice of the circumference, he said. When asked by a student to explain what that meant, the master said, it is a voice inside your head. I don't have a voice in my head, thought the student, and he raised his hand to tell the master. The master stopped the student and said, the voice that just said you have no voice in your head is the I, and the students were enlightened. Uh, then we have another instruction here. An instruction question with a k question all things discover truth inside yourself follow your truth impose nothing on others know this and then there's another string of digits that i guess is unsolvable then the next page uh or well i guess actually i don't even know what page number that is but it says 56 unsolved pages but i'm not sure exactly how many there are page 56 which is not completely solved either says an end within the deep web there exists a page that hashes two and then there's what is potentially a string of numbers indicating the hash it is the duty of every every pilgrim to seek out this page and then the final page which has actually been solved uh says parable like the instar tunneling to the surface we must shed our own circumferences find the divinity the divinity within any merge and there's also a picture of a, a different kind of cicada i guess it's much skinnier that is the liber primus and it's translated form so as it, it currently is so it appears to be like i guess a manifesto of sorts which is yeah. where the theories really kick in is because this is telling us anything about what cicada is who they are be that a person or an organization you would imagine an organization but to get just the, the resources printed up around the world even from like puzzle one and things like that um yeah or if people were just making it up because again like i don't know the only thing mm -hmm. that's certain is that the specific web puzzles were confirmed with the one pcp key which um which if you PGP. don't know pgp pgp the pgp keys which i mean 
the average person, I feel like, doesn't even know to check those. Like, it's it's pretty simple technology if you, like, look into it. Like, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's basically you just, might like, You might encounter them around, because, like, journalists will uh, often use them to get not necessarily anonymous uh, leaks or sources from but, people, but just, like, so people know that there's secure communication going on if they would like to divulge information to them. But, yeah, that's really the only confirmation that it's, like, one source, one type of... It's almost like a Twitter verified check. <laughs> it's pretty much what, yeah, a, what, a, what a PGP key is. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That's uh, that's one way to look at it. Um, and that's basically all we have. We have a bunch of tweets from Cicada, whatever that may be, um, that are verified and everything else is theory. Yeah, they, they did have um, a Twitter account that I do not know if it's active currently, but it wasn't anything like, oh, Cicada, like at Cicada 3301. And I don't believe it was verified. <laughs> Well, no, it, it actually, the one I, the I'm referring to actually was, because um, oh, they used that. the key. Um, and but they only kind of came out, like, yeah, because they, they did list some of the images um, for the later puzzles there. Um, but they also basically came out with some PR statements, um, because there was, like, this weird hacker group that called themselves 3301, uh, that, like, hacked a Planned Parenthood website or something. And so then Cicada was like, yeah, that wasn't us. Uh, we're not even hackers and we don't do anything illegal. That's what they claim. So, uh -huh. but yeah, they, they came up with like a PR statement basically. But it was in the same, it was like a graphic, basically. It was their same graphic. The Cicada. You know, with the black, text, the black, black the black image with the white text. But there was actually nothing even hidden in it. Which I got to say, I think is hilarious that this group needed to make a PR statement. They're all about being anonymous and it's like you know what you don't know what we are but we're not that yeah they have like a weird like almost like code of transparency about them or like they don't really tell you anything but then there's certain things that they really want you to be sure of i guess and that was one of them they're like yeah we're not even hackers we're not hacktivists we're not we don't do anything illegal and they're like we do not condone their actions at all they're not a part of us so what we're doing you could almost say Cicada is just like encryption enthusiasts. <laughs> we just we yeah. just want to make sure you're as into it as we are. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll get into it a little bit, but that's one of the potential avenues is that they were just kind of looking for people that were into encryption and just sort of believe in encryption and like personal privacy and things like that. Which would be the so... cool route. That would be the cool explanation that we all hope it is, as opposed to um, some other possibilities some, some weird insect loving cult hey guys this is bill here i'm just coming in after we did the edit on this episode and after we recorded it we realized that we went for almost two hours so uh, we're deciding to split the episodes up and thankfully we didn't actually plan this but it sort of worked in a way where we could split it up at a logical point so this episode covered a lot of the background stuff on cicada and then in the second part, we're going to get into our favorite theory behind the theory and really get in to see what's going on here. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. We worked really hard on it. And so I'm just going to kind of do my regular wrap up. You can find us on Twitter, uh, Facebook. You can just do searches for it doesn't add up or it doesn't add up podcast. You'll find it. We should be on every single one of like the podcast services imaginable. We're working on Spotify because uh, we're not on Spotify yet. If you just do a search using your favorite podcast app, you will be able to find us there. If you have any suggestions or things that you'd want to tell us, we're trying to do sort of like a feedback segment. Uh, we're working on that. So you can email us at it doesn't add up at deadendroad.co. Uh, just no punctuation and it doesn't add up. Or you can message us on Twitter or things like that. So uh, this should be going up on Monday the... I can't do math. Monday the 24th. And then we're looking to have part two up just a week later since it's already done. So that should be October 1st. Monday, October 1st will be the second part. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening. I guess we'll see you then.